Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Adobe Live here in the UK, where you'll find us every day between 12 and 1. Now, if you're joining us from YouTube, that's just fine, but of course, you won't be able to get involved in the chat. So where you really need to be is at behance.net slash adobe live well today we're joined by my friend sarah again for another book club hi sarah how are you doing hi everybody hi tony thanks for having me back week three super good how's your audio uh i think my audio is fine can you hear me you can't. I can hear you fine. It's it's been a week of technical issues, don't you know, across it's the country. Been strange technical issues across really the country, <laughs> and four rainbows in one day yesterday, <coughs> which might have something to do with it. Oh wow! It, it, it has been a crazy, crazy day. Uh, I'm just I'm having a quick run around here just to see if something's wrong with my audio, and I've just worked out. I think I can sort that out right now. Just bear with me a second. I'm sorry, Sarah. Quite all right. I've got. Some there we go. We should be good. So. There you go. How are we now? Can you hear me? You bang on. Perfect. Perfect. Well, good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Start again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. And hopefully everybody else could hear me. Oh no! Apparently audio is good, so I'm getting uh, I'm good. getting some good feedback. So, Sarah, another book club. Yeah, I know. Week week three and. Um, slightly different format this week trying to make each one a little bit different because um this week's book was suggested by a, a, a chat participant stroke viewer last week but um it's not a book it's a short story called the fall of the house of usher by mm. the legendary edgar Allan poe so i had the choice from all of the lovely books that were suggested but this is the one i went for it's um, it's been done a lot. It's been illustrated a lot. I'm going to show in the first instance, just show generally how how this story has been treated visually. It is a short story. It's really not that long at all. But today we're pretending it's it's a book, and I'm making a wraparound cover for it. So unlike previous book clubs, this one's going to have a spine and a back cover, and hopefully, if we have time, a special barcode as well. So this is the kind of treatment that the book has been given in the past, or the story rather, um, classic Penguin, fully illustrated uh, picture of the house. Because as the title suggests, this is a story about a house, a big old crumbling mansion, which when the narrator arrives is noted to have a huge crack appearing in the centre of it that leads all the way down the house, across the garden and into the lake. And what the story is actually about, in fact, is duality. Uh, symmetry, there's a brother and sister who are the main characters in the story, uh, one of whom uh, dies, but we'll, we'll go into that later. But the, <laughs> the house is, is portrayed a lot in association with this story because the house itself is really the, the metaphor for the sort of crumbling lifestyles of Roderick and Madeline, the two main characters who are brother and sister. So we get things like this, this, this beautiful pen and ink illustration of the house here reflected top and bottom so alluding to the symmetry um, and again this one here fully illustrated for penguin this great dramatic black and white one for uh, for vintage and then i couldn't resist putting these in as well these um, blu-ray discs with these fantastic hammer horror versions which vincent price <laughs> yeah wow. look at and there we are some great typography there and this, this lovely, what would have been hand-painted, possibly mm -hmm. gouache treatment with the house. But I thought they were, they were delicious. So my job today is to try and create something that's not been done before. And um, hopefully slightly different approach, but we shall see. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so just while you get set up, shall I just... Do a quick shout out to some of our uh, community who are here. We've got quite a few in. Uh, so Kirsty, hi Kirsty. Uh, Guten Tag, Andreas uh, and Sean. Uh, hi to Stuart. Angus is here. Stephen's here. Caroline is here. It's great that these people come all the time. It's really good to see everybody back here. Oh, good. We've got some regulars. Oh, yeah, yeah. Loads good of regulars. Stuff. Good. Some have been here, you know, right since day one. And I don't think... There are a couple, I think, that haven't missed 
even one. That's really impressive. It's good, isn't it? No really pressure good. then. No pressure. No, no pressure at all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, I'm going to start uh, with previous sessions, the regulars will have seen. I'm doing a lot of uh, demonstrating how I work in real life, which is using lots of analog, lots of hand created elements and bringing those into Photoshop and making them work so that the, the finished piece is a, a total amalgam of digital work and analog work, but hopefully blending quite seamlessly. Today, I'm doing a, a little bit less on paper and I'm actually going to start by the fantastic asset, which is Adobe Stock, because what I want in the background of this book to get going on is a delicious um, paper stock. So I, I could create this myself very easily. I could go into my drawers and pick out any number of, of sheets of antique paper that are in my collection. But for today, just to show what kind of resource we have available in the Adobe Stock Library, I'm going to go for one of these. As you can see, I, I'm barely got going and you can see there are there's plenty there yeah. hundreds and hundreds of sheets of antique paper to choose from so if i pick i'm going to pick a couple um i don't want too much action on the paper not too busy that's a nice one um so i'm gonna i've signed into adobe stock because i have an account with them and i'm just going to license that image because i get a certain amount of images every month for free with my account. So I've picked out a couple of um, lovely papers there. And thanks to the wonders of Creative Cloud, we now have those papers have appeared in my library here, ready for use. So all I need to do is drag these papers into the image. There Have you ever antiqued your own? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. a, a lot in the past. What's your um, fave thing for antiquing? Mine's tea. Is it? Yeah. Well, tea does work and it works really well, but yeah. I tend to I tend to favour ink, of course. You yeah, know. you would. Yeah. We have we have the, you know, including, you know, this kind of this sort of colour here, which is absolutely perfect for mm. sepia, sort of tea stained, grubby. But tea does work really well. I yeah. spill enough tea to know that it works pretty well. <laughs> it's great for staining. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we've got an antique paper in here, but this one's quite strange because it actually has, when you get close in, I can see that it has a sort of painterly texture, which I'm not that keen on. So I'm going to leave that one off. I'm going to go try this next paper from the stock library, which looks a lot more appropriate straight away. So let's get that in. What you will see on screen is my wraparound book cover template. What you'll notice is I was just extending the corners of the paper behind this crop here. This is a like a mask, what Tony called last time. Masking tape. Digital yeah. masking tape. So yeah. <laughs> this, this view is click on and offable so that I can see exactly where the book will begin and end. So these guides here, where the grey stops and starts that's the actual edge of the printed book everything here is bleed and then these fine lines here tell me where the spine is going to be so we, we can turn that on and off but you can see that i've had to extend the paper a bit just to make sure it bleeds off the edge so no problems when printing okay so i'm going to leave oh, leave that there so i quite like that paper i think it should be a little bit paler so i'm just going to go for a really straightforward lightning and take a little bit out of the saturation so it's not quite so creamy all of this attention to detail matters there we go okay so that's already uh, labeled that layer important that you label your layers all the time that one's labeled old paper texture as it came in from the creative cloud library so i'm going to save before we go any further You've got yeah. excellent layer discipline, you have. I, I do all try. All of the guests I I've seen, I think yours is <laughs> the most disciplined. I do try. So The Fall of the House of Usher, some people may have read it, of course, and, and know every word of it. Excuse me, coffee time. <laughs> One of the first questions I asked yeah. when Emma and I were discussing my upcoming Adobe sessions was, am I allowed to drink coffee while I'm doing it? Of course you are. It was a deal Sorry. breaker. Okay. <laughs> so... 
the book is about a brother and sister called Roderick and Madeline. And uh, without giving away the whole of the story, Madeline is shown from the beginning of the book to be very, very gravely ill. She is in fact catatonic. She wanders about the house of Usher, almost literally looking like death. And her brother is, is worried for her. Um, she is a sort of symbol of the declining um, fortunes of the Usher household. And in fact, partway through the book, um, she dies, she passes away and she's, she's put in the, the family tomb. So I'm going to try something here that I've only done a couple of times in the past. I've prepared a sketch of Madeline already. So we have the sketch here of this very gaunt, ill-looking woman. She's going to become even more ill-looking, quite, um, quite exaggerated. So I'm going to work over the sketch of her. But I uh, only tried this a couple of times. So this is a bit of a gamble, but I'm going to work in uh, using symmetry, uh, which is something fairly new, but perfect for this book because um, the story is all about the fact that the brother and sister are in fact really the same person, the sort of two heads uh, living together as one entity and the sort of duality of, of madness and wellness. So I'm just going to start by working over this sketch of Madeline, but theoretically, label your layers, theoretically I need only work on one side. So let's just, yes, this is working. So because I want Madeline to look exactly the same on both sides of her face, I'm going to be working using this amazing symmetry tool here, which means that whatever I do on one side is repeated perfectly on the other side. Now, one of the things so we know about the human face is that no human face is actually symmetrical. One of the most unnatural things you can do when drawing a face is to make it symmetrical. No human face is the same left and right. So what I'm hoping this will achieve for us is the face of a woman who's not only ill, gravely ill, literally gravely ill on, on the point of being entombed, but she also has a sort of otherworldliness or an unnaturalness to her, mm. which is born of the fact that she's exactly the same on both sides. If you met someone in real life whose face was exactly the same on both sides, you would freak out. It'd be one of those things where... Yeah, you would know immediately it wasn't a real You'd face. know something wasn't right, but you yeah. wouldn't necessarily know straight away what it was. Well, you'd, be, you'd be staring at them for ages. It is one of the things that um, that we're told is the closer you are to symmetrical is considered mm. to be more attractive. Yes. In that, even though it's it, it's something you can never achieve because like you said, you would look very, very alien and manufactured. Very strange, yeah. 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 And Carl Lagerfeld famously said, there's no beauty without strangeness. Absolutely. And, and I completely agree with him. Some of the most interesting and attractive people are the ones with the idiosyncrasies. Mm. I don't like to use the word imperfection because I don't believe in perfection. perfection. Yeah. Exactly. And I don't believe in the word flaws either. No. Because that suggests a, a deviation from from a default and none of us are default. I've always been at the odds with the terms like that for things for um, over something over which we have no control. Completely. You are, you are born the way you are born. And it shouldn't, the least important thing should be, you know, I mean, obviously, if you're walking around covered in garbage and you're probably a health risk to everybody else, then that that's probably something that you could remark on and just say, do you know, it probably would be better if you weren't covered in garbage all the time. But, yeah, you know, yeah. otherwise, it's, it's, it's something over which you have no control whatsoever. Whereas, you know, the characteristics of, of your character and of your soul, they are things that you can control. Yeah. You see, no one expected additional philosophy today. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's what you get no. for being sort no, of, you no. know, over this 21, is good. 31, 41. This, <laughs> is, <laughs> this is what we've started, and I think we should, yeah. we should almost continue in this vein. I think anything that makes people think about those things is a good idea, and it's, you know, I think it's helpful as well. I agree. So, so this, uh, this symmetry tool is 
is perfect because Madeline is she's unnatural. It's it's suggested she is perhaps not of this world. Certainly, she's not long destined for the world. So when I was thinking about how to tackle this cover, the idea of of creating both sides of her face using this amazing tool it was like, there's the answer. That's what I'm doing. Perfect. So now, again, I've said this in previous um, sessions, but what we're aiming to produce here is not a book cover that's so finished it would be sent to press. What we're aiming for is something akin to a really good rough, a rough that's gone from initial sketches and development into something where the client's going, yep, that's it. That is what we want now. Just go away and, and refine it. So, so I'm drawing quite roughly. I'm not going crazy with um, obsessive detail, but sort of yeah. hashing it out. Enough information for it to be talked. Yes. Yeah. So you can kind of see the process. So I just love this symmetry, Tony. It's a... Uh, it's a great thing, isn't it? Bit of a game changer. Yeah. And here she is starting to take... Oh, hello. Nice straight lines. Here she's starting to take shape. And of course, I can make it symmetrical on any plane. It can be vertical, horizontal, diagonal. Or even, even multiples of that. It's, yeah. It, yeah. I've got a lot of playing to do with this yet, so I'm sure I'll discover more as we go along. So good, though. I might just turn my guides off for a moment. There we go. That's helping. Uh, I saw a question a moment ago from mm. uh, Jackie, actually. She's asking about the bleed. Should the bleed not extend further beyond where it is, or sh shouldn't it? Yeah. Bleed? In, it but, probably I mean, in a production should, work, yeah. it would, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yes, it, it probably should. And, yeah. and again, um, that's one of the advantages to creating your own your own backgrounds or, or textures mm. if, if you're using that sort of thing. You can you can create them to the exact size and resolution uh, that you that you want to make sure yeah. they're completely suitable for the size of the book that you're working on. So so yes, I usually add way way more bleed than than is required just to make sure um that we've got plenty always easier to trim away than to add it is yeah exactly yeah. so uh often bleed will be something like five mil or three mil or or if it's an american book they'll do inches so they'll ask for say a quarter to half an inch but um i tend to overcompensate a little mm -hmm. and we'll go for perhaps half to three quarters, sometimes an inch, depending on what I'm working on. And then I do I do actually work quite um, quite big as well. So my, my, my work's often supplied at a much larger size than it needs to be. Now, to, is that is that a hearkening back to analogue production? Because there used to be a thing back when I started, when there was, I mean, you're, you're significantly younger than me, but the, oh, back when... There, well, you are. <laughs> and you've certainly got better skin. <laughs> <laughs> but when uh, when I started, we always used to work two up. Yeah, so you'd, you'd literally work at twice the size because then the, the, you got the details in the camera reproduction of it. Yes, I think that's what it is. I mean, that's how I trained to do things. Hmm. You had to work bigger and you would expose any line work on a, a PMT camera, photomechanical yeah. transfer camera. And it just made sense because, you know, if I if I blew this up to um, hundred percent on the screen, let's have a look. Mm. You know, you can you see all the splodges and detail and the, and the crudeness of the line. And then as soon as you start to take this down to to what we might call the the Amazon view in the book yeah. world, where you look at a book cover that's an inch big, it, yeah. it immediately starts to look better. And of course, the bigger you work. The, the more detail you can get in. Which I mean, that's the marvelous. thing, isn't it? Right, is that these days you don't just have to consi consider, um, you know, the, the 
print size, but you have to consider the billboard reproduction, mm -hmm. um, which of course, once, but theoretically, an A3 original at 300 PPI should technically be all you need because the dots get bigger when yeah. you go up for billboard. But now yeah. you have, like you just said, you have to consider thumbnails. You know, how is this going to look when it is yes. that one inch size on Amazon true? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and in, in fact, it's, it's called the Amazon test. Um, mm. Book covers often have to be revised because they, um, they, work, they work perfectly legibly at even 50%, but um, when they're down to an inch square on, on the screen, they haven't got quite the, the pull mm. or, the, or the grab, if you like, the, yeah. the visual grab. And of Do course, you know what? Yeah, oh, go sorry. On, sorry. I was no, just going to say, what I really like about the mirroring in Photoshop is that, that you, can, you can work on either side. Some things that mirror, you can only work on one side. Hmm. Yeah, and it gets mirrored across. But Photoshop, you can switch if you decide you suddenly want to work on the left-hand side of something. You go ahead and work on the left-hand side, and it gets mirrored across. So it's I like that that it's quickly adaptive. Yeah, I was quite pleased to discover that actually. Mm. I, I'm always drawn to working on the right. Not quite yeah. sure why, but um, I mean I'm working on the right-hand side now. But yeah, yeah, I want to switch to the left just like that. I can. It's no biggie. Mm. So we're trying to make her look ill without looking too horror film. I don't want her to look like... Yeah, The Ring or something like yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> she, yeah. She's not quite that. See, now I'm going to both sides as if I'm drawing both sides of her, but I don't have to. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's that subtle difference between, between really, really deep dark eyes or dark around the eyes and just the sallowness of the... Yes. But I think it's in the cheeks, isn't it? The cheeks and the eyes are the things yeah. that give that away when they start to sink. Yeah. <laughs> oh, such a, such a perfect Halloween discussion we're having. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I just want to point out as well what I've done in advance. I've created a, a set of uh, favourite brushes here from Kyle's photoshop brushes all the ones i know i'm going to need to create this image plus a couple i didn't necessarily know if i'm going to need or not so these have all been put into a brush set called house of usher which yep. is specifically for this job i do have other brush sets that i save for particular clients which can be quite useful if, you, if you're doing repeat work for a client you keep coming back and they come back to you for, for new work yeah so it's, it's really good to save your brush sets that so new you... long overdue search field is is cool as well. I mean, it's been a long time coming. Yes, search oh, field I, I at agree. The top. Yeah, I agree. So I'm using this lovely big wash here, spatter brush, super mm. wet. Because what I'm actually trying to do, obviously, I've, I do work very analog, and usually, possibly, this character would be created with ink on on paper. Yeah. Um, but what I'm trying to do today, because I do do it from, from time to time, just for a change, is to try and recreate that look with the tools that are at my disposal. And, mm. and certainly Kyle's brushes provide all of the different uh, textures that I would need. There isn't, I don't think there's any tool I have sitting on my real desk, if you like, that can't be found in there, yeah. Kyle's brushes. One of the best things that Adobe did was to pounce him, yeah, and, and get him get in the, get him in the brush cupboard. Absolutely. Do you do you use anybody else's brushes just out of interest, or any others you buy? Or I don't actually. No, I used to buy Carl's brushes anyway before. Me too. He worked yeah. for Photoshop, but um, yeah. no, haven't have you uh, any you would recommend? Uh, I use some from Aaron Blaze. Ah, so okay. Aaron Blaze is the the Lion King and Brother Bear guy. So he's Disney yes. uh, chap, and he has a his website is Creature Art Teacher. Uh, nice. dot, I think it's dot com, but he has some great. I use hair brushes of his because his hair brushes are phenomenal. They are really really good. Hair. Uh, hair. Oh, yeah. as in actual. Actual hair. hair. Yeah. 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 He has some hair and fur brushes because he does lots of animal studies. Um. And I, I use those a lot. Not always on hair, strangely enough. Sometimes if I want to uh, apply some erosion mm. to something, I use hair on a very low flow um, 
to actually erode stuff away and it gives me these fine fine lines and because they're That's constantly really direction idea. changing they change with your bearings so the way mm. that you're you're, you're tilted and moving, they change. Really good brushes. That is a really good idea. Mm. And in fact, Tim's just popped that link into the chat. Good plan. And uh, Jane's just saying it's amazing how adding that wash has brought that face alive all of a sudden. It's just... Yes, it has. It's, yeah. um, and of course, it's, it's Photoshop. So rather than having to wait for the ink to dry and uh, settle and sort of bleed into the edges like it would on paper obviously I, I have to sort of wait and see how it turns out this is if you like drying automatically you can yeah. see here where i'm making a bit of a hash of the ears you can see where the ink is sort of digitally drying yeah spinning beach ball and overlaying itself but yeah the wash makes makes all the difference i need to do That's something no hair dryer required no well this last doesn't need a hair dryer does she she's she's no further use for a hair dryer really Oh man, I used to have to do that on rushed airbrush jobs that used to come in a rush. You'd literally move across, but then you'd be following it very, very closely yep. with the hairdryer. Oh man, <laughs> so I'm glad I don't have to do that anymore. Um, Sandrine's just asking, could anybody recommend brushes for Illustrator? Well, Sandrine, I can point you in the direction for some of those. So you can try Retro Supply. They do some good brushes for Illustrator. Um, give them a go. And uh, that's one place I'd go for those, so... But there are others. And I think the, uh, Von Glitschka's got some as well, actually. So if you check his stuff out. Um, people talking about different free brush places. Uh, brush Breezy, uh, apparently. Kirsty's adding. So I don't know about that one. Never visited. Um, there's some terrible hair puns going on. I'm not even going to remember. <laughs> of course. Of course you've got hair puns. <laughs> hair today, gone tomorrow. Oh. oh. Yeah. I told you they were bad. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, um, Sean's Sean's talking about the brush experience. When you search for brushes, it opens all the brush folders. Yeah, you know, it's you know, it, at least it's there now, which is the which is the good thing where it wasn't before. Um, I use Big Beautiful Mess a lot, oh. like a lot that brush. But I'm not as organised as you are with my brushes. I've got to be honest. <laughs> Mine are just like they like they are in here, dropped in a cup. <laughs> they used to be. Um... Prior, prior to the, the, the current uh, version of Creative Cloud, there used to be something I would buy called the Brush Box. Do you remember mm. the Brush Box? Mm. A guy called Derek, I think. Derek's Brush Box, I'm going to say it was called. It was only a few dollars to buy, and it was a way of organising all your brushes, but it would yeah. I don't know what I kept doing wrong, but I, I would lose it, or it would uh, <laughs> the brushes would, would fall out of... Uh, sink and it, it I, I could never quite get it to work but when it did work it was it was amazing it was incredibly mm. organized so just a little bit more drawing on madeline again i would be going into a, a lot more sort of care and and detail for press this hair would probably be a lot more sort of realistically rendered oh, it's coming on grand It's quite a bit more to go before we uh, reach the end no, of this. Well, folks are enjoying it. It's good. There's a big brush conversation then still yeah. going on in here. Um, Reverb Mike is saying, I still prefer actual brushes. Well, don't we all? Yeah. It's, I mean, uh, I use, I use uh, you've seen my desktop. Yeah. I, I use many, many real brushes, but these mm. do some very, very interesting things. Mm. Have, okay. have, do you, do you, are, you, are you using Fresco at the moment? Are you working in Fresco? I've at doubled. All? I've doubled. With They've Fresco. got some new stuff in in terms of brushes. They've got new charcoal brushes, which are fantastic. So and new smudges as well. So Ooh. smudges sound good. I do like a bit of a blender. So yes, yes, yeah, smudgy brushes. I don't know if you can see it. There's a slight delay on uh, the brushes rendering. Can you see how I'm kind of waiting yeah. for the brushes to catch up? It's quite interesting. Might be an idea to do a quick, just a quick update save, just to yeah. purge any of the processes that might be holding back for the history. That's one of those things. If you're using lots of, if you're working 
intensely with with computationally intensive i love saying that phrase how, how clever do i sound now i'm gonna sit back for a minute and just enjoy it <laughs> no but if you are using things that make heavy use of, of, of your processes one of the things you can do as a sacrifice to kind of speed that up is reduce the amount of history that you actually have running ah hot one, tip mm, it's one of the things you can do but of course the downside of that is you lose that part of the history. But. Yes, right. Okay, so I could I could do a lot more to Madeline here. I could refine mm. the hair and the ears and, and so on. Um, w- one of the ways we know Madeline is not all is as it seems with Madeline is because just at the point of her being buried, it is noticed that she actually has a slight bloom in her cheeks which is the giveaway that all is not quite as it seems. So so our Madeline is going to have that that slight blush Ooh. that betrays that she isn't quite where we think she is. At the risk of sounding very Monty Python, I told you I wasn't dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm getting that's that Spike Milligan. Spike Milligan, <laughs> no. isn't it? Uh, Spike Milligan did do something like that, but no, in uh, Monty Python, the Holy Grail, there's, there's, oh, a, yeah. there's a scene like that. Really. So I told you I wasn't dead. I'm I getting dead. better. <laughs> but yes. So now I'm going to I'm going to turn the symmetry off because I've finished basically doing um, the thing I wanted to do with waking hair sort of unnaturally symmetrical both sides. And what I'm going to do now is just work on that. Put a bit of wash into that chin a little bit because I want her to be quite dark under here oh pink 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 that's a black no. oh come on there we go as people now quote Sandrine's quoting Monty Python bring out your dead <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's Halloween we can do what we yeah. want yeah Sean's doing the same uh, Robert saying, "Spike, I told you I was ill on his gravestone. That's, That's it. That one. was Spike Milligan's quote. One. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah, um, they're all coming out now. Money for an ex-leper. <laughs> 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 oh. Okay. Fantastic. Right, and of course, so- a, whole, a whole load of people <laughs> underneath that tier who are going, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah." So right, here's, so here's Mar- Madeline, uh, the the undead and or dead undead, whichever we want to believe she is. So I can we've got the sketch there turned off. We've got all the layers of wash. Uh, we've got the cheeks, which show that she's actually not quite dead. And then our symmetrical, well that's interesting, um, our symmetrical Madeline. Now um, one of the things that I wanted to do here now is create my own brush because. Which one shall I do first? We'll do the ink blots first. So this is a fun thing to do. I, I use a lot of ink blots in my work. In fact, they're, they're quite quite naturally created all the time because I always spill stuff and ink blots are good for, for punctuation and atmosphere and so on. So I'm going to get a little collection of brushes together uh, by and make them using these ink blots. So I'm going to make a little collection of these are these are genuine ink blots that have <coughs> been created with ink dripped off the end of a pen on a piece of paper. And so what I can do then is I've made a little cluster here. Mm. I can then highlight that little cluster. And go to edit, define brush preset. I'm going to call that uh, Blobtastic. Nice. Creative. So there we have that. Originally, <laughs> we've got a, a brand new brush which I can add to my house of oh brush collection. Oh my God, you are so organised. You, you, you go, you go raving mad if you didn't. So Blobtastic's going into the house of Usher. Now, if I try and use, you see the shape of the brush as it's going to be. If I try and use this straight away, well, yeah, nice. I can kind of do one at a time like this. I can change the flow. You know, I can just bang them down. 
but it's not quite right. So what I'm going to do, do the dynamics. You're going to yeah. If I go into the brush settings, I can then give it dynamics. I can scatter them. Let's see scattering. Uh, there we go. Now mm. you can see at the bottom how that brush is going to spread out. That's much more in line with what I want. I can make it more jittery. Can increase the intensity of it. I want it to be a little bit sparse, so probably don't want to go any further than that. Um, we can wet the edges, give it more of a watercolour appearance, and so on. So I think perhaps in the first instance, let's just test that brush. I think I could go on refining that brush forever, but it's picked up the square as well. I might do that again. Um, so that's how we make a brush. Yep. I'm just going to quickly knock that together again, make it a little bit less dense. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to crop that and okay. Uh, well, we just take some of that white out. See, it was picking up the square, it was picking up the paper in the background. And then do some contrast, just to make sure we've got a really clean brush. Yeah, don't forget you've got the visibility of both layers ah, on there. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. No worries. So, don't forget, you can always adjust it. So if you want to go, that's it. So... Real life happening right here. There we go. Warts and all. Don't forget, you still won't, the, the underlying oh. layer is still on. It's easy done, though. Isn't it? You know, and uh, it's... There we go. You're working when there's... Uh, and it's back on. What is going on with that? That layer's determined to stay on. Get rid. Get rid. Absolutely. Right, let's try that again. There we go. There you are. Okay. Nice. Right. Well, however this turns out, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to make the brush from this. So this is blobby two. And again, we're going to give that scattering. Just test it. Okay. Scatter it a bit more. Okay. So I'm perfectly happy now with that with that blob brush. And again, I'm going to add that to my collection of Usher brushes. Too many brushes open at once, as you can see, running through the whole lot. I quite often add, thing, add things that I use like that repeatedly to libraries. I find them to be kind of nice to access that way as well to add. There's a good, that's a good tip. Another hot tip from Tony. Honestly, these sessions have been 50% about me learning stuff. I don't feel like I'm really showing anybody anything. It's more like, you know. No, you are. You are. are showing... And it's fantastic. They're 100% about me watching you draw, which is great. <laughs> right. So I'm going to try this. You know, from my point of view, that is, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So try some of these blobs. Um, for, a, for a real cover, as it were, I would be making several different uh, ink blob brushes because they can start to look... A little bit mechanical if you use the same ones over and over again. Um, it's just... and of course, you can always change the controls underneath that activate that scattering with pressure if you're using um, a tablet as well. So if you wanted to change it so the scattering varied mm. with your stylus pressure, where it says control in the um, underneath the scatter slider, you can see it says control just there. You can change that to... Mm work with your pen so the scatter yeah. will the lot harder you press the greater the amount of scatter you get okay so there we go and a caroline by the way is saying she loves watching you so you're great oh, to watch really? well she's saying actually saying you're great to watch sarah but oh, i saw the word her. love underneath and jackie's saying we love watching how people work oh that's and good to know caroline comes back with feel like we are all learning together so that's the we kind are. Of idea we're relaxing having a nice chat <laughs> It's well, we're relaxing. Thing. You're working really hard. That's okay. <laughs> That's all right. I'm thinking about a million things at once. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, okay. So there's one more brush I want to make, but I'll do that in a minute. In the meantime, I'm going to 
take my madeleine and put all of her layers into a folder yep we're going to call her mads and yep. so that's that's preserved my, my madeleine is preserved whatever happens next she's preserved i'm going to make a duplicate of her hide the original and then i have a copy to work on and, and play with because what i actually want to do is merge all those layers so she is a single entity and again because this the central theme of this book is about um the nature of uh, duality symmetry uh brother and sister being sort of two halves of the same entity and also that whole idea of um the house at the end being split into in the middle of a storm and crumbling into the lake uh, the idea of division is, is really important to this book so i'm going to take madeline cut her in half and we have two halves of madeline now and i want her right half on the left and i want her left half on the right because again this is a wraparound cover so yeah we are paying attention to the back as well as the front let's make sure she's level pretty much there we go so we have half of madeline on the front and half on the back and so we've got madeline left and then madeline right save that and preserve that so we have our original madeline if anything goes wrong from this point on and um so You've got your safety madeline safety <laughs> madeline yes now i wanted the cover to, to really quite dramatically change from front to back so i've prepared this um this background it's a this is a real brush. This is a real brush of mm. scratchy, very dry ink on cartridge paper. I'm going to take this texture and put this into the background behind the new, in fact, I'll put it over the paper. Okay. So, okay. Put that there. And again, we're going to make sure, oh, hell no. We're going to make sure this um, extends past where our bleed is required yep and then move it along so we have a slight we have something happening here where we get the scratchiness just coming into where the spine is going to be okay now this may or may not work this is an experiment i'm going to try now and invert left hand madeleine there we go so we've got ghost madeleine the easiest trick in the world inverting the image let's get rid of that pesky rogue brush stroke there very very crudely so there, there's ghost madeleine on the back so we've got negative madeleine on the back and positive madeleine on the front again i'm going to have to get rid of that stroke annoying roughly there we go somehow on this cover i've also got a Make way for the title, which is coming next. Um, so there's, now it's time to do a little bit more work on the front cover with using some more of those absolutely delicious um, brushes of Kyle's now. This is a brush I used in the last session, this lovely scratchy one that looks like a, a pen that's breaking and bleeding ink everywhere. So I'm gonna add a bit of this to the front so I want this to look as close as possible to something I would create on paper. There we go. So I want her straggly hair falling in her eyes over her face. A bit more organic. Don't forget everybody here, by the way, uh, that we have our own Discord. So you can join us on Discord and chat away there day and night. We've got a really nice little community there um, chatting all through the day. Um, so yeah, go ahead and check us out there. Tim's just popping that link into the chat for you. So there you go. You can see that's that amazing uh, ink splat pen is creating the kind of splats that would occur if I was using my most knackered nib. Yes. That's just on the point of snapping, but but not quite there. I wanted to go for a sort of. Inky Mole versus Charles Keeping kind of vibe here as well. Okay. That's probably enough. Okay, so save. We'll call that splat lines. 
uh, one more brush that I wanted to make, um, just to go for that slight sort of classic touch of horror. Guess what? I've prepared some bats. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to do the same thing again. Um, just take these three little chaps here and just make sure that's nice and contrasty. And then define the brush preset. So that's for bats. So we've got another brush straight away, which you can add to the House of Usher collection. You know, Again. I used to work with bats. Did you know that? No. <laughs> you did. Why am I not here's, surprised? Here's another tiny, tiny factoid. Well, when I it's actually... It's a big one. That's a big, tiny factoid. Well, it is. When I came out of college, I worked for the Royal Society for Nature Conservation, which is now... Uh, the nature trusts but mm. the first trust I worked at I lived with um, a bat expert and so I started out going and working with the bat groups mm. I did the I did the bat calendar 1991 <laughs> 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 oh, is that so funny I know it is though but bats are amazing so you know a lot about them I knew a fair bit about bats yeah I mean it's been a while since I've had to actually deal with any like 30 years or something like that but no i'm still keen on bats they are incredibly uh, important to our ecosystem they i know are. at the moment they are you know they're being victimized well, they're not somewhat. popular at the minute are they're they not they're popular not popular at the moment but but they do far more good than they do do bad and caroline's calling me batman thank you and tim's oh, saying nice. they're calling batman i like that <laughs> right. So right, I'm, playing, I'm mucking about now. I didn't know that. See, that's another amazing thing that I've learned. I'm sorry. I just no, no, know, I like it. I, just, I, like I it. love bats. So I'm just mucking about with my bats now. Massive bats. How big do we want these bats to be? Not that big. big. It's not that small either. Quick, here's a quick question for you. How big do you think the largest bat is? A real bat. Real bat? Yeah, in terms of wingspan. Three feet. Five. It's the... Get out. Yeah, the fruit bat. Fly, flying fox fruit bat is uh, five Ooh, foot yeah. wingspan. Oh, you devil. They're big. I didn't work with those. I only worked with British bats. But... Cripes. It's big. It's a big That's... animal, right? <laughs> you know it, a swarm of those coming out of uh, out of something. You know, it forms a very, very dark cloud. of. of but, you know, they're not... Their habitat, you don't see them like that. That's fascinating. That actually is. They're incredible creatures. Can you keep them as pets? Uh, not in this country, it's illegal. No. So all bats, all bat, all native bat species here are protected by the Wildlife and Countryside Act 1971. Okay. Uh, and the amended act, which came along, I think, in 1990. But the um, they're all protected. It's an offence to keep any any bat or part of a bat, even live or dead. Um, and it's an offence to photograph a bat. £1,000 per bat. Fine. Really? Yeah, it is. You need a licence to do it. To photograph them? To photograph them, yeah, because they're, typically they're out in the dark times. Yeah. So when you see them, they sometimes see the little heads pop out of things. It's so cute. Um, and, uh, of course, if you're out in the dark with a camera, the chances are you use a flash. Yes, um, of course. Uh, and the bats can hear that. But it's actually damaging to the hearing. It's, it's like concussing you. Um, with the sound wow. of a flash so yeah no if you took a photograph of, of five bats and you were found to have that photograph that yeah. would be a five thousand pound fine and it's, i it's never not knew a, that yeah I'm, I'm, that's amazing i mean i knew they were a protected species i knew things like if you um if you have a bat if you buy a house and there's a bat house attached to the back yeah. of the house for example you, you have to leave it where it is yeah, I, I knew things like that, but yeah, and you, you have wow. to be careful about what chemicals you use in your house, in roofs, and roof spaces, because typically, you know, so in houses, the most common species you'll get is the pipistrelle. Right, uh, pipistrellus, pipistrellus. There you go. So I do remember some of it. Um, they are super tiny. They, I, I could fit one quite comfortably on my thumb. Yeah, they're really, and I've not got very big hands. Um, uh, unlike Tim the Mole Man, but the um, <laughs> but uh, they're super tiny, really, really tiny things. They look like tiny dogs with with wings. Uh, Very cute, dogs. but they can get through a really, really small hole 
like that. And they generally have about, in a colony, there'd be about 200 of those. Yeah. And they get in through like the fascias of old houses. But if you find them in your loft yeah. and you want them removed, you have to get expert help to do that. I mean, are they are they a pain? Do you have to get them removed? No, they're really good. And if you don't like bugs around your door and stuff like that, leave them there because it, bats will generally eat significant amount of insects per night. I think one of them eats eats about three thousand insects or something like that. I can't remember that off the top of my head exactly. Really? No, I know what I know where I'm getting that number from. It's oak trees. Oak trees support three thousand different species, and upon which bats are dependent um, uh, in this country. So here you go. They are people now talking about bats, and Whoa. of course, someone inevitably talks about vampire bats. Yeah, yeah. Have well, you ever seen one? No, not in real life. Mm, kind nice. of wish I had. Dark. You know that they attack horses and cows. That's what they do. They kind of land, and they just sort of a weird little dance. It's like that. Is that why they got the bad rep? Well, because they sometimes infect them with other things that they pick up. That's the problem. Right. Um, but no, it, you know, any, anything that feeds off another creature generally doesn't want to kill the creature that it's feeding from. They just no. want to be able to pop back. But yeah, because the ankle, <laughs> ankles ankles give them a ready, ready supply of, of the blood in which they drink. Um, their saliva acts as an anticoagulant, so it won't right. Um, and they just they do this little dance, hop on, have a bite, have a drink, stop salivating. That <laughs> allows the blood's natural coagulation to take uh, take place, and then off they go. Amazing. <laughs> who would have who would have known that? I mean, there's such a they're such a staple of the horror yeah. film. They're the classic. It all goes wrong, and the bats fly out. And yeah, no, it doesn't work like that in in reality. I mean, they are responsible for some things, but generally things that people have put in their way in the first place. But but they are interesting creatures. Investigate bats today. <laughs> oh, and their poo, their poo. If you garden, right? Yeah. So if you garden, especially things like roses and things like that, bat guano is actually a fantastic fertilizer. I'd heard that. Mm, it is really good stuff. So right now I'm making a very fake barcode uh, with a very still quite blobby Wacom pen. I, I mentioned having a problem with my Wacom. Yeah, it's still going on. It's still going. I've changed the nib, brand new nib, bought ten new nibs. Um, still going. See there's see there's blobs yeah, yeah, at the yeah, end. Yeah. These little, weird little blobs at the end. It's almost like a double tap is occurring, isn't it? It, it? is. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's something something's not quite right. So. I'm faking a barcode. In real life, a barcode would be generated and um, would be a legitimate yeah. scannable barcode. Mm. It would be given to you by the publisher to put on the book or the publisher would put it on themselves to get their designer to do it. But um, this is not real life. It is one of the things your design needs to take into account, though, isn't it, of course? Absolutely, that, you know, yes. And yeah. as long as this middle section of the barcode here mm. is okay... Um, the is readable, which it, it really probably wouldn't uh, going on my version. But um, you can what you do with the rest of the barcode, what 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 shape you you put it into is up to you. So I've done many uh, a sort of adapted barcode, if you like, the sort of drips or creates a shape or is formed into the shape of something. Ooh, so it's just like as long that. as this section here in the middle, as long as that's readable by the, the scanning machine you can kind of do what, what you want with it so um again this is quite a sort of crude plan but i like That's to try and make never the... occurred to me before sarah ever yeah it's it's yeah, a thing you're... you can do it yeah so you were going to say that it's something you like doing is i do if i if i can if i can create a, a bespoke barcode for a book then i will because it's it's another area you can design you know it's, yeah it's assumed that you can just leave that alone so th that would be our our barcode and then somewhere on the on the back we would we would usually we would leave a little bit more space on on the back for what's called the blurb which is the bit of the book which sells it to you once you've got past the cover you've got the bit of blurb on the back which gives you the pricey of the book um mm. and how that's going to work so only a couple more things to do now to get this to roughly where I want it to be. Um, okay, we've got about five minutes of okay. natural time, but don't forget if you need to go that's over fine. a little bit, that's fine also. Okay, we, we might manage it actually. Um, 
Now, I prepared a couple of titles, um, which I'm going to... I recorded myself making a couple of titles. Little time lapse. I Wouldn't love play. these. <laughs> oh, you haven't seen the Halloween nails, have you? I, I've, yeah, I have. I saw because I follow you on Instagram, so I saw them on Instagram. They're candy so corn, good. candy corn, with one witch finger for yeah. pointing the finger at spells, <laughs> accusing people of witchcraft, and removing contact lenses. Of course, that's the practical reason for the sh no, for the no. short witch nails. <laughs> That's the way you put it on Instagram. So these are, are you using a GoPro when you're making these little movies? So I was talking about them to no. somebody last week. No, it's it's an iPhone attached to a tripod and a homemade uh, like boom arm. So it's oh well, wow. yeah, it's it's completely improvised. So this is a speeded up version of me making the uh, some titles using a parallel pen. They look like this. You can get them in beautiful, choddy nibs like that. Can you see the square edge? Mm, yeah. Uh, and this one's a lovely six mil. So I've been doing these titles with this. Can you see that all right? Yeah. So that's my parallel pen. Um, obviously, such a nib does exist in Kyle's Photoshop collection of brushes. You can get a similar thing. Rather a lot of my own face in this time lapse, but you know, I was into it, so my head is in there. I love so we... these, these are so good. <laughs> so they're, they're quite quick, and again, uh, disclaimer, uh, to normally to take a, a bit of hand-drawn type like this into the real cover, they would probably be a little bit of, in some cases, quite a lot of, of tweaking, refining, making sure things are sort of, um, they look uh, just organic enough to look real, but also, get rid of the sort of strange idiosyncrasies that sometimes come with hand work. Yeah. So as they say, here's one I prepared earlier. Um, in a minute, you'll have to decide for me whether I'm going to use the title on the left or the title on the right, because... Oh, start dropping that in the chat, people. Yeah, I can't work out which one I like best, or even which one's going to fit at this point, because I've not left myself a lot of room, so... I like the flourishes on the right, personally. Yeah. Yeah, I was getting into it by then. You were, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like, especially in the in the second one, mm. that that one actually looks more like an element of architecture. Right. There's okay. something about that if you, house and usher for yes. me form a main body of a structure, and then you've got the kind of rise to an apex with the ascender of the H. That is very well observed. Have and I think, you know, well, I think that's what that's just what it's, it points out, what it shows to me. Uh, so, but uh, on the chat, we've got right, 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 <laughs> right, 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 right. It's uh, unanimous. Then we've got, <laughs> it pretty much is, and we've got three lefts. So now okay, I think it's definitely that's fine. the right hand side has it. <laughs> cool. That's fine. That's a good, easy decision. So, what I've got here then is. Uh, Here's the one on the right. I'm yep. just going to straighten it up because it's quite crooked. And you can see, actually, hopefully you can see in this um, scan that I didn't use black ink. It's actually, it's called a sheening ink. Mm, it's got and lovely it, um, tonal it, shifts in it. Yeah. yeah, it goes down, it comes out looking blue and it, it goes down looking blue, but um, dries to different colours. You've got yeah. some purple in there and... And some red actually as well. So, oh, sod that. Okay. <laughs> there's, only, there's only so much cleaning up you can do. Yeah, true. Uh, when you're working to a deadline. Okay. So this should be. Say, so usually I would do things like this kind of lettering. I would kind of now start to get the the rulers, and I would perhaps straighten things up where they're obviously not straight. Not that we want it to be look like it's been drawn by a, a machine. We don't want it to look like a font for sure but normally there'd be a little bit more primping first before I drop it into the image. Now, in the first instance, I'm just going to bang it on here and see what happens. Clearly, I haven't quite really left myself enough um, space for that. Just make sure it's in at the top. So I'm going to have to work out where it goes. 
And poor old um, Edgar Allan Poe, he may not even get his name on it at this rate. But yeah, I think he's going to be bottom line, isn't he? <laughs> he is. He's a he's a he's a postscript. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I'm going to try and get rid of the white. I can. Nice. Without. Oh, oh, is that working? Yeah. Yeah. You can always yeah. split those, you know, if you want to. Oh, yes, of course. So, yeah. Yeah. So you can use the uh, option key to um, to split the, the thing there and change the, the to, that's it. Yeah. There you go. It's just so, satisfying doing that. Just it's split good, it. Isn't it. Yeah. It's so good. Um, so obviously, clearly, we've got a, a slight legibility problem uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> with with not leaving the, of course the obvious thing i can do is um make our mats a bit smaller just to give ourselves a bit more oh hang on let's try that so we'll give ourselves a bit more room on the front And we need a suggestion as well for our book for next time, don't we? So we do. Good point. We do. Yeah. We do. We do. We do. So I mean, I've got a list from some of the others. We've got the White Plague by James Herbert. Uh, we are. Uh, Miss Peregrine's House for Peculiar Children. Rosemary's Baby. Um, That's a good one. Yeah. And it's a great Edgar Allan Poe. So somebody said, never more, quoth the raven, never more. That's lovely. Yeah. It's impossible to say how the idea entered my brain, but once conceived, it haunted me day and night. That's lovely. Just going to put a little bit of uh, shadow around the edge of this paper as well. Just give it a little bit of kind of... Mm -hmm. Terminated a bit at the edges. Yeah. Oh, so we've got sure. just a few more minutes, just a couple right more here. minutes or so. I think we're about there, really, in, in terms yeah. of what we can manage today. I think I think we're about there. Um, when I put the book the book online, um, when this is all finished and completed, I'll probably tweak it a little bit. I'm going to add the word "poe." Poe needs to be in there, of course. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, yeah, so the title is there. And I think I, I either have plans for a big Poe here, sort of under her throat, or, or perhaps in this natural sort of area here. But that, I'll probably need to hand rent that and then add it. Let's put a little bit of. Yeah, and it's back in a fortnight, of course, because next week is all all about Max, all about us, because now everybody's had a little bit of a relax after working at Max. Those of us that were working on it and everybody's absorbing all of the huge uh, amount of information that was present there. Um, yeah, next week is all, all Max themed. So we we'll had to catch up on all the new features. And then the week after, we'll be back, Sarah. We'll be there. Yay. Doing more book stuff. <laughs> this could <laughs> just more. go on like for every, every Tuesday of the year. As it far could. As I, I, I could do this all day. Oh, wait, I do. <laughs> 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 okay. And not UK Max, Gareth. No, no, no. This is just you know just from the the global Max that we've just had. So this is uh, this is a chance to do it. Some of the stuff, by the way, on there is available uh, all year, so twelve months uh, from last week. So for all of the people who provided content that agreed to do that, uh, then you can see it all year. Well, uh, barcodes we in, uh, we will put some text on the back. I'm going to fiddle with this so it's all nice and legible and finish the spine before it gets posted anywhere. Yeah. Bit of editing and that'll be sort of legible enough to, to kind of go out. But we're, we're kind of kind of there, kind of there. I think that's fantastic. Oh, Sarah, thank you. <laughs> and really great to see what, sorry, I had to bump in with the whole... We had a little lecture on bats, which we weren't expecting. We did a bit just of philosophy <laughs> a bit at the of beginning. <laughs> uh, I, remembered, I remembered how to split the sliders, which is go. amazing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and I can put my uh, little 
um, brush collections into a library, also yep. useful. Yeah. So yep. yeah, I'll tidy this up and get it to sort of where it might be in real life and, and then I'll post it online after. Fantastic. Well, thank you again. And thank you everybody for joining us. Always great uh, to see you here. Don't forget, we're back tomorrow as well. And this special uh, week, uh, it's Global Adobe Day off on Friday. So just uh, streams tomorrow and Thursday, but do check out, especially check out Thursday, I would. Mm, so I would. one more thing, Tony. Yeah. I need next week. I need the next book. You need the next book. Oh, yeah, right. We yeah, we do. We do, we do, we do. So I will quickly jot down the suggestions if there are any. So we have yeah, so Miss the White Peregrine. Plague. Yeah, Miss Peregrine. Yeah. Rosemary's Baby. Um, I did have, I don't know where the other post-it note has gone uh, from here, because it's definitely not the golden age of ballooning. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, next week, next week. The Omen. Oh, <gasps> that's a gift. That's my choice. I'm, that's I'm, your choice. I'm that's my choice is the omen. Right. Okay. Any more? Uh, no, I think we're just with Oh, Rebecca. Ah, uh, okay. Rebecca. Which is on TV at the moment, isn't it? A new version. Oh, is it? Yeah. So we've got Miss Peregrine, The White Plague, Rosemary's Baby, The yep. Omen. The Omen. Yep. You know what? I'm going to decide and keep it a surprise for two weeks' time. Fantastic. I'll awesome. decide. Oh, the You'll shining. Find out. The, oh, the shining, shining. Came, shining came in at the last minute. That would be a uh, interesting one to do. Okay, so I'll, I'll I'll announce next, not next Tuesday, the Tuesday after. Fantastic. Which one that's going to be. <laughs> Brilliant. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Thank you, Sarah, especially for for working uh, right here in front of us, working so hard as well, and it's so, it's so good. <laughs> everybody else, uh, don't forget join us in the Discord. So our own Discord is there. But from uh, Sarah and myself. For now, uh, we're done for today. So see you Thanks soon. Everyone. Stay happy, creative and safe. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.